Hello and welcome back to our Stealth AI series. Now we're almost up to the point where we're going to start adding our AI to our uh, project here. But before we get to that, we need to finish off the character's movement and uh, slight animation hitches and things like that before we can smoothly transition over to doing AI. So I'm going to spend a short while here going through some minus bugs and fixes and things that we didn't get time to finish off last time. So let's get cracking. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fix and correct something in the sense that when we released from a prone, when we go when we sorry when we go prone, we want to make sure the character is technically in a crouch position. Now, character movement component doesn't have a prone position and he has crouched or standing, so we're going to make sure that prone always uses the crouched uh, sort of setting. So we're going to use that from here. So to do that, you just go from where we got go prone after do once. We're going to go in here and just do a crouch and just do the function crouch, hit compile. Now what that means is that every time we go prone, it, no matter what circumstances makes us go prone, we are always going to go into a crouch position which sorts out the capsule collision correctly as well as any other weird tweaks as well. So that's that first thing. Next we want to be able to turn whilst we are in prone. At the moment when we're playing, we can go prone but we can only go forward and backwards. If I go right, we get this sliding action. So we need to turn this into tank controls when we are on the floor. So to do tank controls, uh, which means basically when you push A or D, it's going to rotate the character rather than move them. You're going to go into the character here and go find where it says move right. On the move right here, we're going to change the end result based on whether or not we've got the character in prone position or not. So to do that first of all, we need to check what whether or not we're in prone. So we've got it is prone boolean, so we can use that. And we're gonna plug that into a branch and then plug that in to our move right. Now if it's false, we want it to continue as normal to add movement input. However, if it's true, we want to add rotation to this thing. So then you go add actor world rotation. Click on that. Then delta rotation, we're going to split this. So right click and split. And the delta rotation is actually going to be the axis value up here. So drag that down to the yaw, and that will turn the character in the yaw axis, which basically turns them on the spot. So let's check that out and show you that. So I'll go into prone position, hold down D, and now I'll turn, and I can move forwards and backwards in that position as well. I can do it with A or D. And then stand back up. So next we've got this sliding issue. Now we need to fix a couple of things here. So first of all, we need to get direction plugged into our uh, animation blueprint. At the moment, we're only using the speed variable based on here. So we need to get the direction. Now we're using speed and direction previously in our locomotion state machine. Going to jog, you can see how we're using speed and direction in the crouch walk and the BS jog as well. So we got speed, let's get direction. Now get direction is quite simple. We're going to drag our direction variable out and choose set. And then from that, we're going to calculate direction. And you can see it requires two things: it requires a velocity and it requires a base rotation. Two things that are quite easy to get hold of. So drag your player character variable out, which we got hold of last time. And you're going to get out from there, get velocity, which is basically its speed and direction. Next, you want to get its rotation. So drag from it again, get actor rotation. And then plug that into that calculate direction too. Okay, so now we've got direction and going into it. However, that's not the end of it. What's actually happening is when we play our montages, we are telling them at the moment not to end. So they hold their last pose position, which is not great because we need to tell it to not do that on certain circumstances. So let's go into our crouching and standing montages. So this is from going from crouch to stand. Now, previously we put a notify on here. You want to make sure that this is close to the end, not directly on the end, but close to the end and hit save. And you want to do that for also uh, stand to crouch. Make sure it's near the end and hit save. 
these are two note files that we put on there previously that's what we want now we're not going to do it with the uh, prone one because we need to keep it in prone position because we're doing custom stuff with that instead we're going to go and edit the is crouching and is standing notifiers so at the end of these we're going to just do stop montage and do montage stop and plug them both into montage stop now with montage stop if you don't put anything in the montage section it means it'll stop all montages happening on that character which is what we want so hit compile and let's see how that looks so go down to crouch and now I'm walking around in crouch stand up and I'm no longer gliding around the floor I'm going to prone I can turn and rotate and move like so now the last thing we want to look at doing is fixing this issue when we go up ramps and steps I can't get up when I'm prone but if I stand up and go onto it and then go prone you get the weird issue where you're just clipping off the edge here now you can't climb up steps because you're in crouch position and crouch can't get up small steps so what we're going to do is tell it to rotate the body based on which angle the floor is at so that goes true as well when on this slope over here I go prone on here it just goes face first into the floor so let's rotate them based on the floor that they're on so to handle the pitch adjustment there are two ways of doing this there's a slope method and there's a step method the slope method it works by just doing one line trace down to the floor and looking at the angle of the slope that it hits now it works fine when you're working on sloped gradients like this however it doesn't work so well when you work on steps like this because technically the, each of these steps is flat so therefore you return a flat angle which won't get us exactly what we want instead we want to use a step method and the step method takes two traces it takes a forward one and a backhand one and they both working together work out a direction that the floor is going in and that way it's a lot more robust a lot more useful uh, so that's what we're going to be using so we're going to go into our third person character and in here we're going to create a new function to handle pitch adjustments so we're going to call this one pitch adjustment and whilst we're here we're going to go into the variable list here and make a new variable and this one's going to be target rotation and that's going to help us later on when we want to do a uh, smooth blending between the different angles that we need to position our character and that'll be a rotator hit compile and inside your pitch, pitch adjustment what we could what we're going to be doing is doing two find floors where we find the floor in front of the player find the floor behind the player and work out the angle between those two points so let's make this work with a find floor and we need a capsule location for this so drag your capsule component out and get its world location but that's not enough because we want to get the location of it ahead of it and behind it so for that we also need the actors forward vector so get actor forward vector and multiply that by a float and I'm going to do 50 units ahead so 50 and then we we'll add these two vectors together to get our final starting vector and that will get us a find floor result right click on that to split it and you can access more data hit the bottom one uh, uh, again with another right click and split and you'll see even more data that comes out of it because the one you want is the floor result hit result location so basically the location of the hit when it hits the floor in front of the player we can take that location and promote that to a local variable called uh, front hit and we'll plug that into our function start there now we want to copy all of that over except for the set front hit and paste that again afterwards this time changing that multiplied value from 50 to minus 50 and what that's going to do is put it behind the player instead of in front so likewise going to go to the hit result location drag out promote to local variable and do back hit so now we have two locations we have a front hit location and a back hit location so now we're going to take both of those and work out the angle of its between the two so for that we need to find the direction 
So type in direction, you'll see get unit direction vector. From, we can use back hit, so drag that into there. And to, you can use the front hit, just drag that in like so. This returning direction vector is going to give us a normalized vector, uh, which gives us a direction between the two. And to get a rotation out of that, we're going to come out there and do make rot from X. And that gives us a rotation to work out a pitch between these two. So what we're going to do is we're going to set that to our target rotation. So drag out your target rotation and do set. But this is not as simple as it is because we don't just want the, we don't want all of it, we only want the pitch. So right click on these to split them both and drag in just the pitch from the top to the bottom. So you just don't want the pitch coming from here, you want also the roll and your to come from it where it's currently getting those from. And there are two locations we're getting those from. Most notably we're getting the your from the control rotation. So get control rotation and split that. The your for that will go into the target rotation Z there. And the roll is gonna come from the actor which basically be zero anyway, but for simplicity's sakes, let's just put it in there. Get active rotation and split that. And this one will have the X going to there. So now we're getting e your pitch and roll from three different locations, all plugged into this target rotation. Chuck that in to the end there. Hit compile, and that's that pitch adjustment function done. Next, we're gonna go back to the event graph. On the event graph, we now need to set that target rotation up with a tick. So right click and add a tick event. And you're looking for the function rinterp2. Now I've done videos on interp2s before, but essentially what they do is take the value from the current and it has to move over to the target uh, value over a certain amount of time based on its delta time here. So this way of blending two values together uh, smoothly. So the target rotation, pretty simple, it's just this one here. The current rotation though, is going to be basically what we did here. Get active rotation, get control rotation. Copy that and plug that in to here. I'm gonna split the current up and the current uh, roll is gonna come from actor rotation, the yaw is going to come from the control rotation, and the pitch is going to come from the actor, uh, the current actor's rotation as well. So go to the actor rotation there, there you go. The delta time is going to go up to the tick, and the interrupt speed will do as 5. You can tweak that later on. And the final result from that is going to go into the actor's rotation itself. So get actor rotation and plug, uh, sorry, not get, sorry, set actor rotation. Set actor rotation and plug that into it there. Okay, so there's going to be the blending between the two values. So now we need to call that pitch adjustment in our code here. Now, a couple of places are going to go. Uh, first of all, into the prone trace. Something done in the last episode. I'm going to drag the pitch adjustment into the end there. And plug that into the end there. Then we go back to the event graph. On the event graph, when we go into prone, so go prone, we're going to do the pitch adjustment there first of all. So, so as soon as we start going into prone, it adjusts the pitch. And then we also want to tell it to not adjust the pitch and we set back to standing upright when we're finished. So what we're gonna do there is take the target rotation out, do get, sorry, not get, sorry, set. Set rotation. And we're going to split that. And we're gonna get the actor rotation, split this, and put the x into the x and the y into uh, sorry the z into z, but leave pitch at zero. So it basically makes it standing upright. I'm going to copy that, and we're also going to put that when we do the uncrouching. Uh, so when we do the crouch and uncrouching stuff over here. So we do it on crouch, stand to crouch. Plug that in there, 
And we could probably do it on here too. And that's it. Hit compile. And let's test that out. So if I go up to your steps now, hold down into prone, you can see how the angle of my prone has changed accordingly. Okay. Um, so one thing you can see here is that it is inheriting the yaw whenever it wants to. Now we're going to change that so it doesn't do that. But for now, let's just test a few other things out. So we stand up. And we are now standing upright, which is what we want. Okay. And if we go back into prone, we adjust ourselves to be on the floor at the correct angle. So we're just going to fix the bug where it is turning with the mouse. Now the reason why that's doing that is on this tick event here, we're using a control rotation. We don't want to use that because remember we I remember now we turned it off on the use control rotation, so we don't need to use it. So I'm going to delete that and just plug it straight into the actor's yaw there. Next, you want to take this target rotation and we're going to split that, I think, here. So we're going to split this and split this here. So the target rotation pitch is going to come from the rotation there, but the yaw and roll are all going to come from the rotation of the actor. So the only thing that's changing is the pitch. Okay. Gonna hit compile and close this. So let's see how that looks. So we can move around as we like in the game here. The free movement of the camera. And if I go onto a slope here, the adjustment of the pitch happens there. And up we go. Stand up. And I flatten out. Go to the slope. And you see the pitch there just correctly and there you go and that's it so now we have the movement of our character in place we can now begin work on our enemies i'm going to start work on the enemies pathing get them guarding a certain area and uh yeah and that's basically it really and we go from there so if you want to watch that next part plus all the rest of the parts of this series head over to patreon.com forward slash ryan lady where you can watch that part plus many others before anyone else Big thank you to all of my patrons and YouTube members for the continued support. Now, if you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button to not miss out on any of my content I release weekly as well as my live streams. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.